All right, it is 8.30, so I will call the meeting to order. We'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And a welcome to our new commissioner, Angie Borsma, and on our other side, our new state's attorney, Dan Nelson, to our meeting today. Item number three is an invitation for a citizen to schedule time on the commission agenda for an item not listed. I don't see anyone in attendance who would like to add an item, so we'll move on to item four, which is approval of the agenda. We will like to, uh, I need to add an executive session, uh, SDCL 1-25-2, Item one, personnel, and item three, consulting with legal counsel. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any comments on the agenda? Is that agenda or consent agenda? Consent agenda. Or agenda, excuse me. Approval of the agenda, yes. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Now the consent agenda. Consent agenda includes approval of the minutes, approval of travel and education requests, approval of personnel action notices, approval of cellular allowances, approval of documents for technology step-ins. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, is there a motion to approve? Move approval. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any comments from anybody? Bearing none, we'll have a roll call on the consent agenda. Forsma? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Item number six, routine business. Item A is approval of claims. Need a motion to approve? So move. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Any comments on the? I do have comments? a question, just to clarify. Uh, Commissioner Jensen. Brian, I asked you earlier that BX Civil and Construction uh, stored material third payment. Can you explain that to the rest of the board? Um, I did mention to you earlier I had talked to the supplier, which is BX Civil, and that is just the final payment for the uh, material that is being stored. And I guess it was just labeled as storage, but it is for the actual material itself. That's for those short structures that didn't get done last. Correct. And I have a couple of questions. Yes, Mr. Pierce. So I have a question on the uh, BOAC, that $7,000 to Jackrabbit Sports. What was, what was that for? And I see it's in the 2018 claims. Was that in your budget? That is for the advertising that we're going to be doing with uh, SDSU. So that is, we had a $20,000 budget budget in publishing and so that is part of the advertising budget we had um, and that line item actually is 18,000 um, however we went over so far in other areas that that line item while under other areas of course went so far over that that is why that is part of that contingency fund um, but that is advertising that's actually going towards um, SDSU advertising and that all went through the board out there? It's just part of the advertising that we have. <coughs> we don't usually for... itemize out the budget. It's okay. basically staying involved with it. She has the ability to spend it where she wants it, I guess. And if she has some concerns of where she should, she brings it up. But otherwise, it's kind of her budget to work with. So so the, the budget of the um, OAC budget then? approximately a third of the advertising budget goes to SDSU is that it it is for this particular project this is going to be for football games basketball games wrestling um, so we'll have 30 second commercials we'll have advertising um, at all basketball games wrestling games uh, <coughs> as well as in their programs we'll actually have our logo on mats during wrestling games so this reaches a target market that we have not um, ever put into play and then will you track what kind of return you get off of that? We do. That's a big investment. That's why I was asking. Yep. And then we I had actually spent the exact same amount with Brookings Radio 
last year, mm -hmm. um, just in a monthly payment instead of all at once. And then I had a question for the sheriff, and I can't find the line item, sheriff, but there was a payment on like 600 and some dollars for repair to a patrol car. Is that something new, or is that one of the things we've talked about before? Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Pierce? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Borsma? Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Item B is our department head report. We'll start with Brian. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I don't want to have a whole lot to report other than our snow removal. Uh, taking place the last couple of weeks here uh, seemed to get out ahead of the ice and uh, seemed to keep ahead of the traffic too so that was kind of nice uh, is there anything that you guys got for me any questions for Brian hearing none thank you thank you welcome Marty Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Just talk a little just about snow removal too. We had minimum issues. Um, Connington County and north of us had a lot more problems than we had. So for for what the amount of snow and stuff, we uh, we came out of it pretty good. Had some slight ins, a few accidents, so forth. Um, otherwise, uh, been staying busy uh, at the jail. Uh, I give you guys a lot of information, so you just have to pick through what you want to look at and so forth. 24-7 continues to stay busy uh, with, um, with uh, UAs and so forth. As I had mentioned before, we average about 152 UAs a week uh, with 24-7 uh, and, and uh, uh, also with probation and drug court. And Hope Court will be starting soon. And uh, that probably will bring some more uh, UAs. So that's, I have a lot of congestion. You know, I've asked a couple times about moving forward on the 24-7 addition is that I have a lot of con congestion in that 24, in the, in, the, in, the, in the control room here in the booking area. And uh, it's, uh, what's bad is when I have 24-7 people in there that have violated or whatever, city police <coughs> bring somebody in that's fighting, they're all in the same area. And it's just, it's, it's just not, uh, you know, it worked for a while, but it's just not working. So we need to think about where we're going to go in that direction. Uh, also, for Christmas, I had a rural businessman that uh, uh, gave the sheriff's office uh, $800 and uh, uh, got eight $100 bills and uh, wanted to find random people to give $100 to. And I think Commissioner Jensen was in my office, and I gave one of them in my office that her husband had bypass surgery. and. And didn't have money to get to Sioux Falls, and happened to give her a secret Santa right there in my office. So we made eight people pretty happy. Um, and so I'll, I'll go over with the, the person that, that gave us the money, and he thought if it went over good next year, they'd give more. <laughs> so uh, I thought that was pretty nice. We tried to find people that that uh, were having having a had a were having a bad Christmas, and and it, so it worked out good. So we made some people happy anyway. Usually law enforcement will make people happy, but we did make eight people happy over <laughs> Christmas. So, anyway, uh, also this past weekend, uh, emergency uh, uh, welfare checks and so forth. Uh, we had three at the hospital Sunday night. One was transported to uh, uh, Yankton. The other two, uh, one was a juvenile overdose, uh, and then another one. But they were able to handle it uh, with the local counselors and stuff. So we only transported one. So our mental health continues to stay busy. Uh, so that's just uh, another area that we have a concern with uh, uh, as far as trying to handle those situations. Uh, also, I had, uh, and I'll ask for uh, um, to um, um, hire, is I had two deputies resign. Uh, they, they only gave me a six-day notice, and I'm not real happy about that, but I have to accept that. They went to the city police, and uh, that puts a bind on me because 
two is my contract deputies. And I have four municipalities that contract law enforcement with me, and that's there too. They, they pay for that. So actually, that, doesn't come, that comes out of my budget, but we get reimbursed by the four contract towns. I have to provide 60 hours of patrol service for Volga, 10 for Aurora, 10 for White, and 18 for Elkton. So when I'm two officers down, that puts a bind on my other ones. So I, what I had to do is that I pulled my school resource officer out of the school, so he's back on patrol. I do have two investigators, because Brookings is, I'm busy enough that I have plenty of work for two investigators, but I pulled one of my investigators and put him on the road, and I pulled my court security deputy and put on the road. And so uh, the detention center is gonna have to handle, uh, between BART and the sergeant will have to handle court security and transportations. My court security guy puts a lot of, a lot of time in between courts and transportation. So it, it'll put a little bind on us, but it's just gonna be temporary. I have one deputy, so I'm three deputies down right now because I have one deputy at the academy. And he'll be done March 1st, so I'll have him back on the road March 1st. So, But my biggest thing is, is to make sure I maintain my contract pounds because they pay us almost $200,000 a year for those two deputies. So, so I have to provide that service for them. My thing is, is that I just had to wait because they resigned at Christmas and I had to wait till now to get approval. So it puts a little, I, I'm, I'm back three weeks, almost two weeks on the hiring process. So I don't know if I, there's any way I can speed things up next time. Hopefully I don't lose two at a time, but uh, uh, it does put a bind on me to wait for approval when you know, I'm not hiring new people. I'm just trying to replace people and get our process going. So anyway. Any questions? On, on that or on your report, I have a question on the report. Sure. On the mental health commitments, I can't remember this. Um, when Dan provides the state's attorney's annual report, do they have a category on there on mental health that where it says BCSO mental health committals, is, there, is that a difference between your numbers and the state's attorney's number? Is that gonna be the same number? No, it's gonna be different because they're, they're gonna have um, See, my numbers in, in the police department will be the same because it, it depends on what they, and actually Mr. Nelson probably isn't aware of with, and he maybe is, on the tracking at the state's attorney's office, is that he may track, they may track ones that come into their office and ask, but nothing ever, it doesn't go forward. So I'm not sure how they're tracking it at, at their office because uh, we wanted to know Remember when we had our task, our task force and looking into mental health, there's lots of times that we deal with individuals that we don't send to Yankton, but we wanted to track that information so we know what kind of issues we have. And that was set up at the, the state's attorney's office to track some of that uh, because there was times that people would go into their family, loved ones would go into there to say, you know, my daughter or whatever, and uh, they were going to track those types of things too. So those numbers may not match. So when we look at your report, then the 60 would be the number for people that were actually committed. They're, they're the actually ones that were transported to either Avera Health or Yankton, yes. Okay. And then we would have had 15 more that were not committed either for some reason. The court yep, didn't handled it, or whatever. counselor yep. cleared them. Yep. You know, uh, uh, we, when we go on a welfare check, you know, we always call a counselor. The counselor is good about either coming to the residence or come into the sheriff's office, and then if they clear them, uh, they sign a document saying that that they're clearing them at that particular time, and then they don't get transported anywhere. We take, either take them back home, or a loved one gets them, or, or whatever. So, is your office involved in the voluntary committals then? No. Okay. And those we're not tracking anywhere. Is that correct? No, we're not tracking voluntary. No. Thank Only you. if they come to my office or come to law enforcement. And, and we are involved in some way. But there's a lot that are, that are through a, a counselor at the hospital or whatever that I don't know anything about. Does that make, does that make sense? It does. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Marty? Thank you, Sheriff. Okay. Next we'll have uh, Kristen. I'll make this brief because um, we have a formal report that'll come out to you guys at the next meeting. 
Um, plus, I want to go over some of this in the board meeting before I give all this out to you guys. Um, just a couple of things. One, we had the National Guard 22 tournament this last weekend. Um, they love the facility. We had about 120 shooters that came through. Um, we're still finding shell casings in random places, so obviously it, it went off great. Um, they love the facility, and they'd like to do it again next year. So um, that worked out fantastic. Even with the um, 22 tournament, we still had a gross income of over 1,200 that weekend. So we still had people coming in using the other ranges, having day passes. So that didn't affect the performance of the facility as a whole. Um, so just a tidbit on that one. We evaluated the cost of ammunition for the year and did adjust those prices. On some of them we were high, some of them we were low. So um, we did just adjust that to reflect the current price of ammunition for our, rental, our rentals. Um, I also evaluated the cost per day um, for the use of the facility just based on basic utilities. So water, sewer, gas, garbage, you know, our, our basic overhead. Um, and that comes out to $115 a day to run the facility. And that is, like I said, our actual utility cost. Um, our line item for that is 30000 even in this year's budget. And our actuals came out to 42000 and some change. So just kind of keeping that in mind, and that's 2019's budget going forward. Um, but it's nice to have that physical cost and knowing what that is going forward. Um, one of the things we're gonna need to look at pretty quickly um, is our, a new point of sale system. We're having issues with our actual tax calculations in the last three financial weekly cycles that we've done we've had to actually calculate that tax um, that we give to Vicki by hand. The report is no longer being generated. And because it's an open source program, meaning it's a free software, um, there is no technical support. So we've been in contact with GovTeller and CP Teller, who is the credit card um, processor, to see if they have software that in directly integrates with them, um, since we have to keep that credit card system. So working with them to see what is our best solution there. And hopefully we'll have something to bring to the advisory board at that next meeting. And so that way, since we're still in January, it's a, an easy transition right here at the first of the year. Um, on a very, very high note, um, according to Vicki, she got this to me yesterday, we ended the year with $100,598.89 in revenue. So say that I didn't, number one more time. 100000 $598.89. So I, I just was pretty happy. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions from the commissioners? Seeing none, thank you, Kristen. That's a good number. All right, Misty? Good morning. I don't have a whole lot. Uh, I do want to let you know I did go down and pick up our Kubota that we had ordered. Uh, he was urgent that we get it. He said, come pick it up so that way you have it. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting a while. So I went down, picked it up last yesterday, excuse me. And um, on the 25th, I'll run a check down, get all the paperwork get all the information from him because that's our next pay cycle so we do have our Kubota in our shop I'm still working on the spray systems because I've got two companies that are going back and forth I want to take the cheapest bid with the best equipment so we're still waiting on the spray system for it um, otherwise that's kind of what's happened in the last day or so uh, that's more important also, I sent letters out to township boards. I've heard back from two. <laughs> so I will be on the phone calling, trying to meet with everybody. And it seems like everybody wants to meet the last week in January. I'll do my best to meet with them all and hopefully get a plan set up for each township, and possibly get some more townships back working with the county other than hiring out like they have been. So, checked on chemical prices. It, it's not feasible. It's too, there's, it costs way too much. Um, so, 
I have a plan, but I want to get a better plan set in stone before I say any more. But otherwise, I don't have anything else. Does anybody have any questions for me? Any questions? I don't know um, about not feasible. So is that what we're charging them, or it's not feasible for them to do it on their own, or how? What are we? Do we need to adjust our prices then? So that chemical I want to use is ten thousand dollars per two hundred fifty gallon tote. Okay. That's, that's too much. I I looked back at what we used just two four D last year, and we used about two thousand five hundred gallons of two four D last year. That's just two four D. I was looking at using Grazon next um, for the right of ways. But with that $10,000 per tote, that's quite a bit of chemical. I'd like to do some more figuring to know that I'm taking the correct route and make it feasible for everybody. Did that answer your question, Ryan? Yeah, I, I, did, I just didn't know how, the, how that tied in with the townships and, and it, meeting their, with them. Their costs did go up. I guarantee you their costs would go up. And then the question, though, is then are they feeling that it's too expensive and that they're going to go to private spraying rather than, than us? Is, is, are we better to have them or in charge them more or not to have them on board? Well, that's, that's what I was going to address. The, the carryover on the graze on next will, you should give the townships an option if they want to use the 2,4-D or the graze on next for the carryover. They will get better coverage with the grazing on next and more control, and you have to you'll have to figure out a price, to make it comparable to cover your costs. I mean, yep, yep, and that's where I'm at. Um, <clears throat> I haven't got that completely figured out yet. Yeah. Working on it. I mean, I'd like to use it because, say, next year we won't have to use as much. We should have more of a residual, like Larry was saying, carry over, so we won't have to have as much chemical on hand if we can get the townships to work with us that's my goal because this is our county and we service them yes for a price but I'd like to keep it that way rather than having some some other individual come in and just spray whatever they want to spray we need to take care of our county any other questions thank you Misty thank you Mike Good morning. I don't have a whole lot for you. Our numbers are down a little bit as far as the welfare side. We're seeing a little, oh, probably about uh, level as far as veterans activity at this particular time. Uh, we will be taking part in the homeless count that'll be coming up here next week. And uh, right now we, all of our federal, we've used all of our federal funds. Um, we had to use them up by January 15th and, and we've succeeded in doing that. And so that's why you'll see on our report a lot of the things other form uh, other funds were used any questions not a question but I'd like to make a comment uh, I was talking to somebody that had a question about veterans benefits and I gave them your name and phone number and they called you and then they told me what a wonderful help you were and what a great job you do thank you thank you any other questions? The only one I have is how do you uh, how do you uh, how do you do the homeless count? You said that's coming up. What's the process? <laughs> <laughs> and it's supposed to be on the on the twenty uh, second, I believe it is. Either twenty first, twenty second, and uh, basically we look back and see what we have as far as people that have talked with us or the ones that we know about. Um, it's between us, uh, social services, uh, ICAP, and they try to get a rough number of how many are homeless. And in Brookings County most of the time it's it's kind of almost it's, it's very hard for us to figure it out what we just have to do is rely on who we know do you have any numbers from the past um, usually our numbers have only been one or two as far as our office is concerned okay. uh, ICAP uh, because of their <clears throat> a lot of the homeless people have children and, and ICAP does more with children than we do and so they get a little better number in that and all same way with social services we're a small portion of it, but we do participate. Thank you. Any other questions? 
Thank you, Mike. Marty, you look like you want to say something. Law enforcement's involved with that count, too. And since I'm on the Salvation Army Board, too, both the police department and myself have, have money for motel rooms and stuff. And so if I happen to put one in the motel during that count, then that's considered homeless, homeless if they're homeless. So, so it's usually one or two a year, too, that, that I report during that time. And that might be somebody who's transient, right? but still gets counted. Right. A lot of times what we do is, if they're homeless, I may put them up one night and then we'll put them on the beta bus for $20 and get them to Sioux Falls to the homeless shelters there. Thank you. Mr. Hill. Good morning. Morning. The uh, I won't say I'll be short. The Brookings County Development Department. We got notification that our local emergency planning grant was approved for one thousand seven hundred fifteen dollars and eighty-five cents. That'll be that was during budget hearings for two thousand nineteen. That was put into the revenue line, so that's already been counted. Uh, Saturday, I went over and assisted the local Boy Scout troop to learn a little bit more about my office's dealings with emergency management. Tonight, we have a planning meeting scheduled at 7 p.m. It will be broadcast, but from what I understand, it, it's not able to be recorded, such as your commission meeting is today, because our planning meeting's happening at the same time as a count, uh, city council meeting. But uh, we are still going to have ours recorded digitally so if anyone wants to hear a copy of it we, we can we can put the digital copy wherever someone wants to wants to hear it there's a joint jurisdiction area planning meeting scheduled for 9 30 tomorrow morning on this floor uh, thursday we got a pandemic planning coordinating committee meeting at that's 12 o'clock noon over at the hospital Thursday night at 7 p.m. we got the Brookings County Firefighters Association meeting and, and there I am going to be meeting with them and I'll have my my county laptop and I'll be able to show what name tags and stuff that each fire department has already requested and give them the opportunity to sign up for more credentialing cards and things like that. Next Monday and Tuesday, if it has been approved, there is a class called Joint, called Jurisdictional Threat and Hazard Identification and Risk Assessment. It's called FIRA. It's required for any of our, our FEMA grants to have that plan on file with the Department of Homeland Security. We do have one on file right now, but it needs to be updated, so that's why I'm, I'm heading to that class. <coughs> Work on the zoning ordinance will continue until it is completed. I will we'll talk a little bit about that when I get to my other report I got in front of me. We are working on completing our, our state and local agreement for the first quarter 2019. At the next commission meeting, I'll probably have to have a special thing on the agenda to discuss the SLA. It has changed a little bit since probably the first major change probably in 15 years so <clears throat> might pay me to go through and just just go line by line and, and let the Commission know what's going on there on Friday I have I will be discussing Madari Township's drainage issue with the NRCS out of out of her and I wanted to know do you have anything specific that you want me to address what we're doing there is and you may realize this is this is ongoing all the way back to um, September of last year. And uh, what my goal is to do is to get a meeting set up with the drainage board and the NRCS, and we're going to invite, like, Banders Associate, an engineering firm that's involved in the issue, and Madari Township officials to come into a meeting with the, with the drainage board and and discuss the issue. Is there anything more specific that the county commission would like? What what I plan on doing is getting a date that we can meet in the future. Obviously, the NRCS wants to know what we're going to talk. What we, what we want to know, I guess, is what they want to know. Is why they don't want to just set a blind meeting up and come in, and and be blindsided. 
I'm, I'm talking to an NRCS supervisor out of her own. Are they going up, to be here or no, you're going tell, to on the telephone? On the telephone. telephone. Okay. And I'm going to set up a meeting. The goal is to set up a meeting in the future for the Brookings County Drainage Board to meet with the NRCS and we'll invite the other parties that's involved in the, in the situation. We're involved mainly because we're the local municipal government. We're, we're the, the lowest level government that the NRCS will come and, and discuss the issue with. So we're, we're going to be more mediators, I think, in the, in the case than, than anything. But we need to get the, this is, this is the only way to move forward, from what I can tell. You know, and I, I don't mean to disagree with you, Bob, but I think we need to be more than mediators in this. And my recollection from our last meetings is that they will not participate if the county does not participate. Is that a fair statement? And we need them in order to take the next step forward in the uh, Madari Township drainage problem. And they won't do anything if we're not participating because they need a governmental entity. Is that, do I remember that right, Bob? Well, I guess I'll find out more Friday, but. but, but mediation, I think we need to be more proactive than mediation. I think we should be taking a lead on this. I'm not saying that, that we have to make all the decisions, provide all the money, do any of those kinds of things. But our citizens in Madari Township have repeatedly reached out to us and asked for help. And what they need is some leadership in this problem to try to move things forward. I, I also sure. think that maybe uh, contacting uh, the chairman, I don't know if it's Mr. Richards, any whoever's a chair of Madari Township be involved. Oh, by, by all means, he, he had left me a message last, last month at near the end of the month when I was out of the office and I tried to contact him this week and wasn't able to. Yes, by all means, I will contact him and get their notes before my meeting on Friday, okay. by all means. And I agree with you, Commissioner Pierce, full heartedly. It, it's just I'm not the one that can take the action. It's the drainage board as a whole that, can, that has the power. And yeah, all I am, all I am doing is, is getting the parties together to mediate. But by all means, I, I fully expect the, the county commission, to, as acting as a drainage board, to, to take the lead as, as appropriate. And Bob, could you bring Brian up to speed on what's going on out there so yep, I he knows how the, the Cause, cause roads is, are affected? In yep, that area. it is a county road that's affected. And I'll, I'll get with him one on one in his office. Any other comments on the Madari Township? Yes, sir. Robert. Um, <clears throat> still the core though Army Corps of Engineers they're the ones that have the decision making power along the big suit correct yes we will and I've been in contact with the Corps too and, and the Corps will come anytime we, we want them okay. our hold up up until now it's has the, always been the NRCS so once we get the NRCS on at least talking to us in the appropriate manner then we'll bring the Corps on we don't necessarily need the core. At least, no, you can you can override me on this. Well, no. But I feel our first meeting probably needs to be with the NRCS and their supervisor because we're bringing in the supervisor from the NRCS to, to this meeting. Meet with them, figure out what's going on with the with the 99-year leases and stuff That's like that. That the core has no, they don't care one bit about any any yeah. of the paperwork. And so that was that was what I was kind of leading to. So their this meeting will help um, with their issue of moving the water back into the channel that does not flood 99-year easement leases down the down the area, correct? That's 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 the plan. Because previously we were not getting any response from them, but we needed that because there's a, when you move that water, it has consequences, obviously. And, um, and the NRCS, NRCS is, is weighing in because it's going to affect the 99-year leases yep. that are around the Big Sioux River. And, and up until now, it's always the answer has always been no, but right. uh, no. Now we're bringing a supervisory personnel in from the NRCS to basically tell us yes or no. I mean, is it is it feasible or is it not feasible? And then whatever the answer is, then we can have a bigger meeting and bring the NR, bring the Corps of Engineers in along with the NRCS along. And you know, it may come to a point where farther down the line, we've got to bring our legislative staff in Washington D.C. involved. To get something going we don't want to go that level yet we want to start stay in South Dakota see what we can do then if it comes to a point where we can't where we just keep hitting the stone wall then we there are other avenues 
And I want to get a lot of these avenues done before March when we're in Washington, D.C., because that would be an excellent time to bring up some of these issues if we have to. Two other items related to that. I think part of the problem isn't just those people down downriver. Um, NRCS wants to keep the water where it is for the easements for the waterfowl on the areas where the water is. Mm -hmm. So they like the water where it's at, is my understanding. Okay, and that's part of the problem with the easements. And then I do think you're right, Bob, that we need to reach out and talk to these folks. But our next step should be there is a state board that works specifically with these issues, and we should be talking to that state board. I, I, I feel like we've kind of beat our head a little bit on the hearing deal, and I think maybe it would not be detrimental for us to take the next step up in the state. So. Commissioner Pierce, when you say that, are you talking about when you say we need to step up, County Commission, or the Drainage I, Board? Our Drainage Board. Which is the County Commission. Exactly. Okay. Just so the public understands that we are also acting exactly. as the Drainage Board. So you're saying that, suggesting that the Drainage Board or the County Commission, which one? Drainage which entity board. is? Drainage Board drainage entity board. should draft some sort of request. Okay. And you're and you're, you are specifically addressing the the water management board, state water management board. Is that the board you're referring to at the state level? I'd given you. I sat next to the gentleman on a gentleman on that board at the last conference I was at, and and I forwarded that information. I'll get it again and send it to you. I got to find it. I can't remember well, his I, position. If you send it right. to me, I, I should be okay. able to access it. <clears throat> okay. All right, we also, I'll start that one also. But I, I feel we still need to do the, the stuff of the NRCS out of Huron. Yes, and, and definitely. That, that if it all works out the way we would like it to work out, that would be a lot smoother way of doing it. But it once we start to get the State Water Management Board together and then the Corps of Engineers and then the NRCS, it's going gonna, it's gonna to end up being proact protracted over quite, quite lengthy. I'm afraid. But very good. I will... Get on top of that one. Anything else on that particular topic? Okay, next up, the NACO Legislative Conference is in March. Right now we have got appointments with Senator Rounds and Thune. And uh, I did not get one with the Representative Johnson yet. I, that's my to-do list later today. As soon as we do know, and I work with, with Ms. Stephenson on what time these appointments are so that whenever you guys, whoever's going to, to the legislative conference understands that we won't be able to come back until after these meetings. So it's going to be a late night getting back in the, in the Sioux Falls and you probably need to make your reservations as soon as you can for the flights just to get the, the later flights. Next up, on the 16th there's a Brookings Day in Pierre. I, I would like to drive my own county truck out with me and Mr. Holhauser to do some. When when we're out there, I both of us like to like to work with the city of Brookings people out there. But there's other places we can go and meet with different people, and such as me, I need to go talk to, to Mr. Wilcox on NACO stuff, and Mr. Holhauser has to go to the veterans side of the house, and there is a new veterans secretary out there now, and. So I would, and plus I don't necessarily need to lollygag around until 8 o'clock and, and start back on, on that day. So if it's all right with the commission, I would like to request to be able to drive my own county truck. It would be county fuel, so I'm, I'm not looking for any additional money. I'm just looking to let you know I'll be driving to, to Pier and back. And the Brookings Home Show is March 9 through 10. I will be using local emergency planning committee funds once again. That's how we, we do that. But when we do have the home show, I've got an eight-foot table. I put up my local emergency planning committee brochures. That, but there's also room for other stuff from the county. So if other county agencies want to put up their flyers or whatever, they're more than welcome to. And um, they don't have to pay towards it. So we'll let the local emergency planning committee has a material fund pay, pay for the booth. And the, uh, the zoning board, it's been brought to my attention that 
the zoning board, our packets have been getting to be sometimes up to an inch to two inches thick when we mail them out once a, once a month. And uh, a proposal has been brought to me, which I'm going to talk to my zoning board tonight. I haven't, haven't had time to discuss it with them. But possibly getting them uh, tablets to use. Not the, not the iPads that you guys use. We're talking just like a $150 Google tablet. And then doing all of our stuff via Dropbox, which I believe the commission has been doing now for a few years. Instead of us mailing stuff out hard copy. Right now when, when, when we do our agendas and everything, we do put our agendas online and we put all of our materials online on the internet already. So, but just, just be aware, I will be, be bringing back a proposal. Depending on what happens tonight at the zoning board, uh, I may be bringing a proposal on uh, getting the zoning board tablets and going a little more digital and, and less paperless. Which brings me up to the, my end of the year report for the, for the newest commissioner. I have got two, two sections under me. I got emergency management and then I got planning, zoning, and drainage. The report that I attended, that I put into the packet, is my 2018 end of year report for the planning and zoning part of my office only. There will be an emergency management one put out at a later date. And it basically breaks down our, our what we do in the planning and zoning world. And uh, our chairperson is Robert Rochelle out of Elkton. Vice chairperson is Kimberly Elinkovich out of just north of Brookings. The secretary of the Planning and Zoning Board is my staff. We had 11 regularly scheduled meetings, one joint city, one special, one work, and then four subcommittee meetings. And uh, my, my zoning board, the, the appointed members get paid $50 a meeting. The county commission representative gets paid zero. <laughs> During the year, we gave out 29, we had 29 applications for conditional uses. We issued 25 of them. One was denied, three were withdrawn, and one was a, one was a carryover from 2017. I'm getting, the, the next one is the variance requests. Actually, this one, this one comes out, surprised me a little bit. We are actually starting to say no. We had uh, 19 requests, 15 of them were granted, three were denied which I don't know if we'd ever be able to find three denied in a year previously. And one was canceled because of the, it was determined it was not needed. 23 plats were reviewed or approved. And uh, the pre-plats are when they come in with an uh, idea on how to subdivide some property. And, and two pre-plats came in, one was approved, and one was withdrawn due to whatever, whatever reason came up. We had two rezoning requests. Typically a rezoning request is either to put a business in an area or to try to get a second house in an area. One was approved, one was not approved. Tax increment financing district was approved over by the city of Olga. We had one appeal heard during the year. It was denied. Our ordinances amended. As you can see, we have done some of the zoning ordinance adoption, or, and we got a Got a few articles done over the past year, not, uh, not as many as we'd like yet, but uh, we did get the flood damage prevention part done and uh, the aquifer protection. Okay, uh, we did attend, we, we get our assistance from the first association of local governments and we attended the South Dakota Planners Association conference that was held in Huron, all office staff, which is Richard Hagen, Ray, Ray Lynn, Maher, myself, and then one board member, Roger Erickson out of Lake Campbell, all attended that. There were 192 building permits issued by Brookings County for a total construction cost of $142,674,575. And that has, uh, in the back part, I won't go through all the historical stuff, but that's, that's one of our better years and the reason for that is the wind, we got a wind farm up to the north, or Coyote Ridge LLC. That came in and that really bumped that up. Now, I won't go through all, all the, the breakdown. This was set in the packet, so do you have any questions with the, with the report? Any questions for Bob? 
Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. That completes our department head reports. I believe we got everybody because Vicki's not here today. Uh, and you have the, B note, uh, the, the noted items, item C. Item one under item C is volunteers with the Brookings County Outdoor Adventure Center and severe weather storm spotters are to be listed in the minutes for work comp purposes and there's two documents. Item two is Chairperson Bartley is authorized to sign personnel action notice forms for Robert Hill and Richard Haugen to receive salary reimbursements from the South Dakota Office of Emergency Management and there's a document uh, under that. Number seven, item seven is a scheduled agenda items. We don't have any today. So we'll move on to regular business. Item A is an action to approve resolution number 19-01, a resolution setting meeting pay and per diem rates for volunteer county boards for 2019. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Motion been made and second. Is there any comments from the commissioners? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Borsma? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Item B, an action to approve resolution number 19-02, a resolution setting the pay for election workers in 2019. Is so a motion to approve? Second. Motion been made and seconded. Comments? <coughs> Call the roll, please. Jensen? Aye. Borsma? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Bartley? I'm going to abstain since my wife's one of them. Motion carries. <laughs> motion carries. Well, it's appropriate. Item C is an action to approve agreement number 19-01, a letter of agreement between Brookings County and First District Association of Local Governments to update the county's HAZMAT plan. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. Are there any comments? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Forsma? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Action D here is an action to approve two requests to fill vacancies for deputy sheriff in the sheriff's department. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. 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 Motion been made and seconded. Any comments? Marty, Marty I think you've covered this, but go ahead, Commissioner. Jensen. Marty, how long have these guys been serviced with the county? Any other questions? Not no call. This this one here. Uh, all uh, all approved. Say aye. 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 I'll oppose nay. Motion carries. Action E is an action to approve a request to fill vacancy for a full time female correctional officer in the sheriff's department. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Any comments? How much does it typically cost to certify a, a, a deputy or? How much was the salary difference, do you know?
<laughs> Save that for the budget hearings. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion passes. All right, action F here is an action to approve the Brookings Register, Volga Tribune, Tri-City Star, and Elkton Record as the legal papers of Brookings County for 2019. Is there a motion to approve? I move. Second? Second. Motion been made and seconded. Any comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item G is an action to approve the official depository for Brookings County funds and monies for 2019 as follows. Richland State Bank, Bank Star Financial, Citizen State Bank, First Bank and Trust of Brookings, Dakota Bank, Wells Fargo, Great Western Bank, and MetaBank. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion been, mo motion been made and seconded. Any comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item H, an action to approve board assignments and department liaisons for 2019. I guess we should go through that since we don't have it first, and then we'll look for a motion to approve. I did do a little free work with most of you, and we'll just kind of go right down the list if you don't mind. On the 4-H Promotion and Expansion Committee, Commissioner Borsma said she would serve on that one. Everybody okay with that? The Brookings Area Transit Authority beta, Commissioner Krogman is there and has expressed an interest to stay. Brookings County Regional Railroad Authority has two members. They don't meet very often. Krogman and Jensen have been on that committee and have asked to stay. The Brookings Economic Development Corporation, the BEDC, Commissioner Pierce would like to stay there. And I will be the alternate. Brookings County Extension Board, Commissioner Jensen will replace Commissioner Miller. Communities of Excellence representative, and then we have an alternate representative. Uh, Krogman took the representative position and Pierce the uh, alternate representative, and this is a relatively new position, and uh, they were going to serve on that. Next one is a domestic abuse of shelter, and that was uh, uh, Commissioner Borsma said she would take that. And the East Central Behavioral Health and Chemical Dependency Board, uh, I'm leaving that one, and Commissioner Borsma said she would take that. The Central Regional Communications Council happens to be the chair and the vice chair. Mr. Jensen and I will fill those positions. First District Association of Local Governments. Uh, I'm taking the county position, and uh, previous Commissioner Miller was filling the at-large position from the county. Uh, Government Affairs Committee, Commissioner Pierce wanted to stay there. That's correct. That's now the Public Affairs Committee. It correct? should be Public should, Affairs. Should be, right? should be now it's Public Affairs. They changed their name. That's yeah. true. Should be I'll, Public I'll Affairs. Fix that, yeah. All right. The Growth Partnership Board, Commissioner Krogman decided to stay there. Housing and Redevelopment, uh, ex official is the chair, myself, has to re sit on that board. ICAP, the Interlakes Community Action Governing Board, I will be off that, and Commissioner Borsma said she would handle that. Jail Expansion Committee, at this point in time, we're going to leave uh, uh, Commissioner Pierce on that, will serve, and also Commissioner Jensen has uh, requested that he stay on the Jail Expansion Committee. Uh, the BCOAC Advisory Board, we have Krogman and Jensen are the current members, decided they wanted to stay there. Joint Jurisdiction Committee, uh, we're working on that together, Pierce and myself, so we'll stay there with the help from the 1st District, so we'll stay there. Joint Powers Board, uh, myself, uh, I will stay, and Commissioner Pierce would like to join that board. Intergovernmental Meeting Group is Mr. Commissioner Jensen and Commissioner Kogman. I wanted to stay there. The Mental Health Task Force, Commissioner Borsma will take that position. 
The Local Emergency Planning Commission, the LEPC, is the chair, so I will be there. Planning and Zoning Board member, I will be replacing Commissioner Pierce there. And the alternate will be Mr. Jensen, Commissioner Jensen. The Weed and Pest Board member will be Commissioner Jensen. Youth and Family Services Advisory Board for the JDC, Commissioner Borsma has accepted that assignment. Hospital Board, ex official member, Mr. Krogman. Commissioner Krogman is on that board and have wanted to stay. The County Coroner is Dr. Heap, will stay. Our Deputy County Coroner is the Sheriff, that will stay. And Deputy County Coroners are the deputies, those will stay the same. The Department of Liaisons, the BCOAC, uh, Commissioner Krogman. Community Health, WIC, Commissioner Borsma. Emergency management is the chair, so I'll take that one. Equalization will stay the same with Commissioner Jensen. Extension is, is a new position, uh, somewhat new anyway, and Commissioner Jensen will take that. Finance office, Mr. Krogman will remain there. The highway department, I will take. Register of Ds will be Commissioner Borsma. Sheriff and Detention Center will be Commissioner Jensen. State's Attorney's Office liaison will be Commissioner Pierce. The Veterans and Human Services Department will be Commissioner Borsma. The Weed and Pest will be Commissioner Jensen. And the Zoning and Drainage has to be me since I'm on the both. Are there any changes or recommendations to that list that I just ran through? Any comments? Hearing none, we'll look for a motion to approve those board appointments and department liaisons. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. We got through that. Item 9 is the Commission Department Director's Report. As Bob Hill had mentioned, the NACO uh, Legislative Conference in D.C. is coming up March 2nd, uh, 2nd through the 6th. I'm looking for some direction on anyone who may uh, wish to attend that. We do have um, budget for, I think, several people to attend some of the national conventions this year. So I was wondering if there's interest, and then we need to start those discussions, and that doesn't have to help happen here but if someone knows they want to attend that we need to get you registered and then get travel and accommodations arranged uh, Bob had indicated that he does have a meeting on the 6th at 10 a.m. with Senator Thune already lined up so in looking at that that might extend depending on travel may extend that out to the 7th too for a return if you don't want to get back really really late but is I guess I'm looking for some direction so we can get together and and plan. Well, I for one didn't make it last year, but I intend to try it again this year. And I I want to be on Bob's flight, but not the bumpy one he had last year. <laughs> Anybody else like to go to the legislative conference? No. Well, if you change your mind, let Stacy know. Other than that, I I intend to attend. Okay, you and I can visit then more about that. Sure. Brookings Day at the Legislature is next Wednesday, the 16th. Um, wondering if you would like to discuss some ideas on maybe putting together some talking points from the county's perspective so as people go out and have a chance to visit with the different um, folks out there that you have um, sort of a, a talking point list to have on hand when you get out there, I guess, first of all, is there anyone, A, is there anyone going, planning to attend, and B, do you want to brainstorm some talking points that I could put together? I plan on attending at this point. At Anybody this, else? At this point, I plan on going. Right. Yeah. You are or is, not? I, there's the Communities of Excellence supposed to meet that day, and I'm not sure that's going to happen because 
Al Hewton is there, and I'm guessing he's going to be down there too, so I'm not sure what they're going to do on that. Al's not going to be there. He is in a meeting maybe in California. I can't remember. Oh, yeah. He's going to be somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, 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 um, so. But if there is a community of excellence, I'm not going, and as alternate, I can handle that if you just let me know if the meeting's going. Yep. All right, there's an option to take the uh, Chamber of Commerce's bus for transportation out. It leaves at 530 in the morning yeah. from the Chamber office. We can either sign up for that or decide to drive ourselves. So I guess the three of us are thinking about it. We'll coordinate. Angie, are you planning on going tentative? OK. okay. I, well, I can drive if we want a little more flexibility. <coughs> so the, the problem is the meeting start. I mean, so we got to leave just right. as early. Probably, We'd leave so. just as early as the bus. Yeah. 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 Just but I, I certainly can drive. That way we can you want to leave home earlier or something like that, too. OK. So. I don't know. Uh, would it be possible to get the traverse for next week, Marty, to hit? Or would that leave you? So that would be an option, too, if we sent, kept the traverse back. Um, those of you, if you want to drive, you could take the county vehicle instead of taking your personal vehicle out there. And then talking points. Are you interested in putting, having me put together some things if you are, so what would those be? One of the things that I'm, I think we already have the support and it's not going to be a problem, but it's always nice to talk about, is if you remember at our 10 district meeting, uh, we discussed uh, one of our legislators making uh, amendment to the open meetings law to allow governmental entities to talk about security issues and cybersecurity issues in executive session. And Tim Reed had said that he would um, work with us to get such a bill developed. That bill is written and it is, I think Stacy might have, did, she, did you send that out to everybody? I can't remember, Stacy. But we've, we've got the bill and if everybody, if you're talking to a legislator, would just want, be willing to say, we'd really appreciate your support on, and I don't know what the number is. The last time I looked at it, it didn't have a number yet. <clears throat> but that bill that would allow us then to talk about our emergency planning stuff with Bob in executive session, or our cybersecurity stuff with Sean in executive session, so we'd have a better handle on what's going on. Stacy, is there a specific time that there, uh, before I know the, the city and the county had representatives that met with I haven't seen a schedule for the day. I think I have that. At this point, that meeting's a small meeting, and generally it's just the chair uh, from the, the county and the uh, mayor from the city uh, that meet along with SDSU officials, with the I governor. Don't... And I don't believe that's actually been set yet. I don't think Governor Noam is. I'm going to just pass this around. You guys can take a quick look at it. i got scribbles over it. Ignore that. This is the tentative schedule as of um, maybe last Thursday, but you're right, the, the governor had not yet committed to a particular time. No. There are several other meetings uh, with department heads that are on the schedule that can be attended. Uh, there is an open floor to walk out, as Tim Reed called the, the, the Bartley secret. You can actually go out on the floor and talk to legislators before they close the floor. And, a lot of people don't know that, and it's interesting to go out and catch them at their desk and have a conversation about any of the items that are on our talking points. At that time, it's easiest to catch them. It really is difficult to catch them any other time, so that's a good time to do it, or during any of the social events they may be attending, our local legislators. But you're welcome to also talk to other legislators, other than just our local ones sometimes. Uh, that makes an impression if you know anybody that's serving as uh, a senator or representative from another district that. Uh, uh, you can talk to about any of the talking points. It's, it's a good time to do that early in the morning. And we're doing something a little different this year in that in the past you might remember that when it came to do gallery duty, we split into half and half went to the Senate and half went to the House to be recognized. Um, this year, if it gets finalized, I believe that this is what's going to happen. Everybody's going to go to the Senate first because the Senate um, does that right away and then everybody will move over to the House section. And, and be recognized again by the House. Could you reach out to the EDC and, and I guess 
RSVP, let them know that we'll be coming, depending on if Angie's able to make it, and then be able to get the itinerary when it's finalized. Yeah, we could have me mail it to us. Do you RSVP for BEDC or to the chamber? Chamber. Chamber. SDS, you will have their uh, coral department out there, I believe. Pardon me? Is it the coral department the SDSU is having sitting on the steps? I don't remember. Uh, they have something, and of course, they'll be doing their ice cream in the chambers. Uh, in the past, we were always asked to help and assist with that. And last year or the year before, they started doing it on their own, so we don't have to do that. SDSU choir at the camp. Uh, uh, yeah, they'll be in the rotunda at 1215 SDSU choir. They have a certain time they have to be done and quiet by. Okay. Any other any other talking point topics that you want added to the list besides the open meetings change? I don't think it ever hurts to talk a little bit about the 20th Street overpass and interchange if that would be appropriate in conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the other thing too would be uh, drainage. At a standstill, and is there anything that they've heard is coming up? Any type of uh, legislation or anything on drainage that's going to hear anything? So it's relatively early in this session, and there'll be numerous bills dropped in the next few days, uh, including uh, Representative Reed's bill on uh, uh, executive session issue. The uh, other bills we're just going to have to be lively and look to see what's dropped if it involves anything, involves the counties. We'll get some direction from from Wilcox and our, uh, our well, county. And what have we done in the past then when we've needed to make a decision or anything like that that they call up and say, hey, we've got this. At times we've wanted to take an active role as a commission in talking to our association and stuff like that. Previously, I think we had our chair and our vice chair meet with with you if there's something and just reach out to everybody else because you know two weeks between meetings a lot can happen out in here in those two weeks so um, similar to other boards have an executive committee that can reach out and take stances on some stuff there too so um, are, are you talking about after Brookings Day yeah well just throughout not, the not session. even not even throughout the session not even counting Brookings Day anymore moving on to uh, you know how do we how are we gonna react if something comes up you know and, and that we want to weigh in on um, I think we should you know discuss that and have something in the minutes that talks about um, how we want to handle that and this year the chamber is going to try something different every Wednesday at noon in the past there's been a, a public affairs meeting and Matt Krogman has reported back to the group there's been conversation about what's going on with bills that are related to what we have an interest in and people had input, but we haven't had a real good attendance at those meetings for the last two years. They've been out at Innovation Campus. And what we're going to try, not campus, but the research center. Anyway, what we're going to do this year, it's gonna be a call-in number where everybody can call in. They can be in their office and sit and listen and participate if they want. And there'll be information coming out from the chamber. And I think that the first one of those calls is going to be on the 23rd of January and there should be information and maybe maybe Stacy when you call the chamber you could find out if they've got the call-in information so that you could give that to everybody happen at, noon, right? at noon over the noon hour and that's with the public affairs committee public call affairs in, but anybody can call participate you don't have to be yeah. on the committee to, to participate in that that's my understanding they will still meet out at the innovation research park but you can call in if you can't be out there right and then I would be interested in knowing from our department heads if they've been hearing from their state associations anything that we should be aware of that's going to have an impact on Brookings County in the upcoming legislative session anybody hearing anything we have things with concealed weapons and there's that we're just actually our executive treasurer for the sheriff's association is just making a list now of, of bills that we're watching we either support or don't support but concealed weapon will probably be one of the biggest anything else 
just to branch off of that, Leanne, I'll be introducing a bill with the State's Attorneys Association. Um, it's a little convoluted, so I don't know that I have time to go into detail, but that'll be presented uh, through the association on my behalf. Um, it's just to, right now, sex offenders can receive a suspended imposition on a violent sex crime, um, which requires them not to register. So right now, here in Brookings County, we have individuals that have been convicted of a violent sex crime that are not currently required to register. Um, so we're going to try to fix that. And so if you're a sex offender and you receive a suspended imposition on your sentence, you're still going to have to require to register as a sex offender. Um, right now, the law is you don't have to. So I'll be introducing a bill to try to fix that, take that discretion away, um, and require all sex offenders, if you are convicted of a violent sex crime, you still have to register. I think it's a pretty simple community safety argument, so uh, that'll be forthcoming through the association on my behalf. Anything else? Your report? I, yes, I am not uh, finished real, yet. Okay. <laughs> real quick, did we decide if we're going to have a committee to be able to discuss stuff, if we need to make a quick decision on association stuff or that kind of thing? Ryan, you mean like, I know we've submitted like letters of support towards a bill. Right. I, I think mean, sometimes Stacy kind of handled that. And right. It seemed chair. like we ran into a situation there where our association was not taking a stance on something that we wanted to take a stance on because obviously our association represents the members who are members of it, but mostly counties throughout the state. And we have different, sometimes West River has some different issues than East River. And so, um, we're going to keep an eye on that. I don't think we just depend on our association to make our thing there. We follow it. We go along with them there. But if there's something different that we want to reach out, I think we need to have the ability to uh, discuss it and make a decision fairly quickly rather than waiting a week and a half or two weeks for our meeting to, to be able to do that. So, um, but I've, Usually it's a person of two people saying, hey, you know what? drainage is an issue for us and this drainage thing doesn't address our issues um, are we okay with the chair reaching out to uh, our, our legislators saying you know we're we're not for this bill this bill isn't good for us you know type of thing um, rather than us <coughs> waiting two weeks and it's already through committee and it's already through on the floor of the house before we reach out to our our representatives and they say well why didn't you tell me this before I could have maybe helped out in the committee so just things like that is what I was, you know, obviously we're not voting on anything, we're not making policy procedures, but we just want to be able to input to our local people where we're at on some of these. So. I mean, historically that's been the chair? Chair and the vice chair usually meet with uh, well, Stacy and okay. discuss it and say, okay, where's everybody at? And we reach out to all of us and say, this is kind of what's coming up. We're not, this isn't good for us. This is what we're going to do. So. Okay. We'll handle it that way. Okay, back to you, Stacy. The conservation district agenda was in included with my packet. That meeting is tomorrow. Uh, it is in the afternoon, which is a little bit different. One fifteen at the NRCS conference room here in town. Um, also included with my report was information on the election of a county commissioner representative on the SDRS Board of Trustees. If you're interested in that at all, come and visit with me and we can talk through that process. Um, we do have um, the Director of Equalization position will close, I believe, at the end of this week. So. I need some direction on um, does the full commission want to sit in on those interviews and if so um, I think we need to pick out some dates and times so that when we're reaching out um, or do you want to put a committee together to determine do you want to sit down in exec session sometime to determine who you're going to interview um, how many and when so as those close the end of the week I guess I'm just kind of looking for process and, and direction on that I think the whole board should interview like we did last time for the director of equalization 
do you want uh, like Stacy mentioned say there's 10 applications do you want somebody to sit down and pick five to interview or do you want to I all think, look through them and I think we should all look through them I'd like to see all of them this is an you important want to position. be able to look at those in an executive session at our next meeting or do we want to move the process ahead a little faster when is the deadline again the deadline is Thursday I believe And we won't meet again till the 22nd. Would you all be willing to have a special executive session to review those applications and set up an interview process? I think it'd probably be appropriate. We do need to move that process forward. How about a date for that? How much time will it take to put those applications together for us to review? Yeah, Next Tuesday? It, it, that would be fine. would uh, be able to do that Monday at like 11 I, I can't be there though oh. from 10 until noon on Monday that's the only time I have blocked off that day Commissioner Jensen you have a meeting at noon yep yeah. that's okay. why we were gonna do it 11 <laughs> Tuesday at 830 it's two hours or less I'm good it won't now we'll just review the Our applications that day and determine who we want to interview. Mm -hmm. That worked for you, Larry. I think so. That is no. Okay. Without objection, we will meet as a council in executive session to review the applicants on Tuesday at uh, 830. Do you want to pick out some dates now for interviews as well do you want to try to fit those in maybe the afternoon of the 22nd um, or later that week or do you want to try to fit something in later next week I know schedules with five people schedules are going to start filling up if they haven't already so I guess I'd like to put some dates and times because I don't know I don't really know what it looks like because we don't know how many we're going to interview but I'd like to set you know maybe a couple of just a chunk of time set aside or something now so that you have it tentatively on your calendar Tuesday the 22nd that afternoon after the meeting works fine for me for me also partnership meeting at 11:30 that'll go till 2 the 22nd so I would have to either miss that or are we anticipating a long meeting on the 22nd we have a lot of so far it doesn't look too bad but that's it's very early yet yeah Two interviews after our meeting on the 22nd. We have to say a specific time, though, so she can schedule the appointments. Yeah. Well, we won't know. We don't have to schedule appointments until after the 15th, until okay. we review. But I just want to set a kind of a chunk of time aside. I'm guessing you'll need probably an hour for each interview. Yeah. So yeah. even a couple of afternoons. Seconds. Even if you have a couple of afternoons available, say at, you know from two or two thirty on the twenty second on, do you have a Wednesday or a, a Thursday afternoon that week that would work, or not? Both of those are okay with me. Twenty yeah, third, make, make any of those. Twenty third is good. Twenty fourth is not for me. Okay. The twenty third for you, Leanne. I can if we start at one thirty in the afternoon. So BDC let's see meets for their quarterly earlier. So let's say 122 starting at 2.30 and then 123 starting at 1.30 and plan that out till 5 o'clock both those days and then we'll see um, how many applications we get, how many we decide to interview and then we'll schedule appropriately. <laughs> Is it typical to shortlist three so that you're sort of limiting the 
time and energy. We got to see what. Yeah. We'll figure that out on the 15th and see who's there. Sometimes you might just get it down to two even. So. Yeah. We're really lucky. We'll have six good applicants. <laughs> And then just a couple of other quick things to note um, on Monday we do have the Volga Fire Department County feed that starts at 530 at the Volga Fire Department we've been talking discussing Brookings Day at the legislature next Wednesday Monday the 21st county offices are closed um, in honor of the Martin Luther King Jr. Day holiday um, Intergovernmental meeting, we still have Ryan and Larry on that. There is a meeting scheduled for the 29th at 3 o'clock here in the community room for that. So it's Tuesday, the 29th at 3. And I can send out some information on that too, kind of a reminder e email. And then I lastly, what's that? that I will be gone for that one. I will be in pier. What, what, what time was it at again, though? It's 3 o'clock. I'll see. I may, I may be able to postpone traveling down there. If not, I can cover it for you, too. And I could okay. cover, too, whichever yeah. you want to do it, Mike. Yeah, they've already sent me an invitation. So. Why, don't, why don't you plan on it? Because I, sure. I have meetings at 5 o'clock in pier. I can't wait. Sure. So. And then lastly, and this is coming up a little ways out, but on Tuesday, February 5th, it's, it's um, from 9.30 to 2. Um, is that a commission meeting day? Yes. Okay, never mind. Well, the first district sent out, there's a, um, a governor's office of economic development is doing a kind of a workshop down in Madison that day. So I will reach out to, I think that's, through first district but if that's scheduled that's also a commission day so that doesn't that doesn't work so well for us so um, that's all I have unless you have any questions for me any questions saying none we'll move on to item 10 the state attorney's office report Dan. well I don't have too much to report um, been in office for a little under a week took office on Wednesday um, and then Obviously, with the transition being the way it was, just uh, getting caught up on cases as best as I can. Uh, the staff has been great, very accommodating. Um, I inherited an office, though, that uh, is short, two support staff, and then uh, one deputy state's attorney. So one of the more pressing items uh, in the next month will be to fill those vacancies. Um, as the commission is probably aware, we posted the two positions the support staff positions uh, last month we received a number of applications um, and we'll be conducting interviews on some of those applications here in the next couple weeks coordinating with uh, human resources as well as uh, Commissioner Pierce uh, who will play a role in in, in deciding uh, to fill those uh, it's a victim witness coordinator and then the one of the legal assistants um, received a number of qualified applications so I I have no doubt we'll be able to select uh, two individuals that will uh, play a team part in the state's attorney's office um, the position for deputy state's attorney uh, who will be tasked with handling some of the abuse and neglect matters as well as the juvenile matters that uh, posting is out in the state bar newsletter as well as other outlets um, so we're looking at uh, filling that position uh, I think that's probably going to be a little bit more difficult to fill uh, just because the attorneys that will be applying for that position will likely be coming from outside of Brookings um, and so that's always always a challenge uh, so I'm a little sympathetic with the sheriff's office in that uh, I'm one of the offices here in the county that that is down a few um, but like I said the support staff so far has been great picking up uh, where some of uh, others have left off and so the office is functioning well um, but yeah I'm excited to be here um, I, I hope I can be an asset to the county and I'll work hard to do so so any questions saying none welcome again all right go on to item 11 commissioner reports and discussion items uh, we do have some 
correspondence we received. Public to Utilities Commission letter and a Christmas Kids Corpse letters. Stacy, do we need to review those before we do this or not? No. Okay. Those are just for your information. FYI. All right, we'll start with uh, Commissioner Pierce. Thank you. On January 3rd, I attended the public affairs meeting, and we've talked about a lot that went on uh, at that meeting, but I did want to also tell you that the dates have tentatively been set for the legislative forums. January 26th will be the District 7 forum here in this room. February 9th will be District 4 and 7. And then again on February 23rd will be District 7 for the legislative forums. <clears throat> Yesterday, I met with the group that's working on the 20th Street overpass interchange issues. And the um, group talked about how it might be beneficial for the city and county to jointly send a letter to our senators who did provide support for our last application and thanking them for that. And if you're all right with uh, Commissioner Bartley as our chair signing such a letter, what we talked about, the, the mayor was at that meeting, I'll kind of put a draft together, he'll look at it, and then um, is it all right with you if Commissioner Bartley signs a letter saying thank you for your help? We'll probably be applying again. <laughs> Something to that effect. Is that satisfactory? Okay. <clears throat> I did talk with Dan, and eventually we need to talk with Bob, but it's too soon right now. We'll start up with the state's attorney's review of the planning and zoning ordinances, but after giving him an opportunity to get his feet a little wet in, in the office, and we'll get that back on schedule again. And I think that's all I have to report. Thank you. I know. Commissioner Borsmer, should be a short report. Huh? I got nothing. <laughs> Commissioner Kogman. Yeah, and I don't have anything either. Same. All right. Well, on the uh, 18th, uh, attended Steph Miller's reception, the 19th joint jurisdiction meeting. Uh, we're plodding along with that. We'll had some preliminary drafts. We've still got some point, uh, parts to put together for that. Uh, the 23rd to the 29th, I enjoyed Christmas with my grandkids in Seattle, so I was out of here. On January 2nd, obviously, the swearing-in ceremony. And on the 3rd, attended the uh, public affairs. And that concludes my report. Last item on our agenda was an addition to uh, the agenda for an executive session under South Dakota Codified Law 1-2-5-2, Item 1, Personnel, and Item 3, Consulting with Legal Counsel. Is there a motion to move into executive session? So move. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 We will take a 10-minute break and meet in executive session.